everyone, my name is Melissa from Inspire Me ASAP. And in today's video, I want to share with you how I teach my students to use sticky notes as a strategy to show and to demonstrate what they are thinking as they are reading. In my previous video, <clears throat> I shared with you how I introduce reader's notebooks to my students. So by this point, we already have a solid understanding of what we're using our reader's notebooks for and why we are using them during our guided reading time or during our re independent reading time. For the purpose of today's video, I have a lesson that I took directly from my unit on implementing reader's notebooks, and I'm going to demonstrate to you how this would look like with my own second grade classroom. I would begin the lesson by using a nonfiction book. Now you can certainly use a fiction book for this lesson, but since we're also learning about nonfiction text features, it's a great way to incorporate those nonfiction text features um, throughout this lesson as well. I would begin the lesson by saying, boys and girls, last, um, last week or yesterday, we learned about how to use our reader's notebooks as a tool to show what we are thinking as we are reading. And we write down important things in our side of our notebook. Well, today, boys and girls, I want to share with you how readers use sticky notes to show what they are thinking. I would have my nonfiction book all ready to go, and we know that we don't read the entire book during the mini lesson because we only have a 10 minute, about 10 minute window of time for the mini lesson. So I already um, bookmark a, bookmarked a page that I want to be sure that I focus on as part of my mini lesson um, with my students. Once I made the connection for our previous learning and what, we were, we, what we've already been doing in our reading workshop lessons, I would then begin by explicitly demonstrating what it would look like as I am thinking about what I am reading and how I would write that on a sticky note. I would read one passage out loud and I'm actually going to do that right now. It'll be real quick. And I'm gonna show you how I would demonstrate and what that would look like and what that would sound like. Today, there are only about 1,600 1, pandas left in the wild. Many of the forests where pandas live have been cleared to make room for farms. Pandas have nowhere to go and no food to eat. Oh my goodness. Boys and girls, I'm wondering, today there are only about 1,600 pandas left in the wild? Wow, that's really sad to me, but that's also a new fact that I learned. I didn't know that. I thought there were tens of thousands of pandas. I didn't know that. That's a very fascinating, sad, but a very fascinating fact that I learned. I'm going to jot down what I am thinking on that sticky note, and I'm gonna put it inside of my reader's notebook. Why are there only about 1,600 pandas left in the wild? Page 23. Now, I always want to encourage my students to cite textual evidence and to include the page number that they got the evidence from. So even my second graders are in the habit of writing down the page number, going back to the text and where they're picking and pulling that information from. I would then share just another example for my students. I would flip to the next page, page 24. I'm gonna read this passage, boys and girls. Panda baby boom. Oh, I noticed that text feature right there. Pandas are also protected in zoos. The first pandas were brought to the United States from China in 1972. Today, there are about 100 red and giant pandas in zoos. Oh my goodness, that reminds me. That reminds me when I went to the zoo with my niece and nephew. And we saw a giant panda in the zoo. I can write that down on a sticky note. I can show my thinking on a sticky note and I can write down, again, citing text evidence, um, citing the page number. On page 24, the text says, there are about 100 red and giant pandas in zoos. 
This reminds me of the panda that I saw in the zoo. Very clear language I would use. This reminds me of. You show, demonstrating that that is a connection and that's why I'm writing that down on the sticky note. The other example that I showed was a fascinating fact. I didn't know that. It was a fascinating fact. So that was why I wrote that down on the sticky note. I would then encourage my students as I read the next page to get them actively involved, to have them demonstrate that they can do this on their own. I would read the next passage out loud they have a sticky note already with them with a pencil and they would write down after I read this passage what they are thinking as they as I am reading out loud this passage and then they would do a quick turn and talk and they would share what it is that they wrote down on that sticky note when we would then transition to our independent work time or our differentiated work time I would then pull some students in a guided reading group with me and I would demonstrate the same strategy with them in that guided reading group. Now, of course, we'd be using a different text during that guided reading group based on most likely what their instructional reading level is. Um, or if they are at independent reading time, they could apply the same skill that you taught in this mini lesson with their own books that they are reading during their independent reading time. I hope that I gave you some ideas of how you can use this lesson with your own students. If you are interested in learning more about this, I will put the um, links to where you can um, purchase my unit all about implementing reader's notebooks and how you can learn more about this. And I'll put that in the um, product description below. Thank you so much.